Hello, thank you for introducing. My name is Ju Hee Jun from Hanyang University, Seoul, Korea. I'm the presenter of the paper entitled Full Body Ownership Illusion Can Change Our Emotion. This is a rough outline of my presentation. And I'm going to start my talk with a story of a movie recently released named Ready Player One. Uh, the time of the movie is set a bit future in 2045. In the movie, people are escaping from hopeless reality and engaged in a virtual world called Oasis, where someone built and where people can work, study, and play, etc. To get into the virtual world and explore the virtual world, people have their own virtual surrogates, which can substitute their own body in the virtual world. They control the virtual body by using motion control devices such as motion capture suit and joysticks from the real world as shown in the picture on the right side. Actually, the movie was taken by using those motion capture devices working exactly the same way as the one we used in this study. The movie is based on a sci-fi novel, and so it could sound too fictional or too far away from reality. However, there are already almost 80 VR experience zones in Seoul. It is the map of the Seoul. Stars in circles represent the locations. There might be someone who tries to build the virtual society already among these audience, I think. In the virtual world, we could have a virtual avatar representing ourselves. As in the movie, it could look like anyone, any creatures, and it all, it, we also could go somewhere we can't go in reality, and we could get easily involved in some activities which I never do in reality. Then we had a question arises. What would it be like having a virtual body or virtual avatar representing myself, moving and controlling the body in the virtual world? Theoretically, researchers have studied the philosophy of having a body, which is termed the embodiment. When it comes to self-related, They suggested that it, co it consists of three components, which are body ownership, the feeling of body is mine, and secondly, agency, which is recognizing oneself as the cause of action and movements of the body, and finally, localization, which is the feeling of I'm inside the body. After that, researchers also have shown that it could also generate by manipulating these three components generating the illusion of body ownership, specifically manipulating the agency. One of the example is the rubber hand illusion. In 1998, both Phoenix and Cohen have published a paper in that people can have an illusion that a rubber hand is my own body when synchronous visual tactile stimulation were applied to the virtual the rubber hand in front of the visual field and to the hidden real hand. Then perceived location of the real hand can be altered where the rubber hand is ro located and the rubber hand in, is located accordingly. <coughs> After that, as technology advances, the idea of rubber hand illusion was extended to the virtual hand and the whole virtual body by other researchers. And various effects of having embodied in several types of virtual body were ex investigated, such as perceptual changes in object sizes when embodied in child's body, also cognitive changes like reducing racial bias when embodied in dark-skinned body. And it could also generate illusion of action, such as illusion of speaking. 
For emotional changes, although some has measured the physiolog physiological changes such as skin conductance responses, heart rate, and skin temperature when applying threatening stimulus such as a knife to the virtual body. However, it has not been rigorously examined yet because there is a still question remained that is if the threatening to the virtual body is severe, emotional effect arise, can arise regardless of the body ownership illusion of the virtual body. So after going through these literatures, our research questions was, were refined to these two statements. First, what is the emotional effect of body ownership illusion of a virtual body? And what if the facial expression of the virtual body changes together? To find out those answers, we have conducted two user studies. In our first experiment, the experiment included two conditions of motion synchrony. In the sync condition, the motion of the avatar was synchronized with the motion of participants as you can see in the video clip in the slide. In the pre-recorded condition, the motion of the avatar was created from a pre-recorded animation independent from the motion of participants, and as you can see in the video clip. Participants experienced the virtual environment through HMD with head tracking. The virtual environment and the virtual avatar was implemented using Unity software. Participants could see the virtual body with first-person perspective, which means they could look the body in the virtual mirror. In the virtual environment, they could also look down towards their own body, like we see our own body in real world. And male and female avatars were separately built and provided to match the gender of each participant. 28 participants, including 12 females, conducted this experiment. The task of participants was to move freely around the virtual room and to look their movements through the virtual mirror. For the dependent measure, we used body ownership illusion questionnaire to measure subjective experience of body ownership illusion in seven point scales with three questions, including two body ownership related questions and one agency related questions. We used valence and arousal of same scale in nine point scale to measure the direction, whether it is positive or negative, and the amount of emotional activation, respectively. We also used the presence questionnaire with 12, 21 items assessing visual realism, display quality, sound, and interaction in virtual reality. The experiment was started with the same baseline measurement and followed by two conditions of motion synchrony for five minutes each in counterbalanced order across all participants. After completing each condition, participants answered BOIQ, SEM, and PQ. And the whole experiment lasted about 35 minutes. For the result, we could see a significant main effect of motion synchrony on body ownership illusion questionnaire in all three questions, which means that people had stronger feeling of body ownership in synchronous condition. For the emotional responses, the results show that people felt significantly higher variance in the sync condition than in pre-recorded condition. How that means people had more positive feeling from synchronous experience of body ownership illusion of a virtual body. However, in arousal, we haven't found any significant difference between those two conditions. In the presence, a significant main effect of motion synchrony was found as well. Participants felt more presence in the sync condition. Through the study one, we tried to investigate the emotional changes as degrees of illusion changes. 
and we found that participants reported more positive emotion when they had a bigger body ownership of the virtual body due to the synchronous movement with the virtual body. And we thought for, for potential application of virtual embodiment, one of the most important and emotional characteristics of the virtual body is the facial expression of a virtual avatar. And we can also easily change. So we have conducted our second study. The second experiment was two by three within group design with two conditions of motion synchrony. Each condition of motion synchrony have three sub conditions of facial expression of neutral, happy, and angry. The other equipment setup and virtual environment was almost the same as the one used in study one. Altogether, 33 participants including 14 females took part in this experiment. As dependent measure, we also use body ownership illusion questionnaire with three questions used in study one, and additional two questions related to face perception and face ownership. And we also use same and presence questionnaire in se second study two. The procedure was started from started with same baseline measurement and followed by two conditions of motion synchrony divided into three sub-conditions of facial expressions. The whole experiment took about 45 minutes. For the result in study two as well, some of the result in study one has replicated that is a significant main effect of motion synchrony on body ownership and agency and face ownership was found. But in both conditions, people reported they could not feel the face ownership. And no significant effect was found for face perception. For the emotional responses, the results show that people felt significantly higher valence in the sync condition as well, especially for the happy face than the other faces. No interaction effect was found between those two factors. Also in the presence, a significant main effect of motion synchrony was found as well. Throughout both studies, we tried to investigate how emotional responses have changed as degree of body ownership illusion changed. We could, we could conclude that participants experienced more positive emotion in synchronic condition than in pre-recorded condition. The greater valence in sync condition may be attributed to the agency, which coincided with a strong illusion of ownership of the virtual body. These effects become enhanced with a happy face and suppressed with an angry face. Based on the result of this study, our further work may be to develop a therapeutic scenarios to help people with psychological symptoms coping with the, their psychological system using this combination of motion synchrony and the facial expressions. And the, on the other hand, the future works may be to extend the interaction domains from individual avatar interactions to multiple avatar interactions in virtual world or to teleoperations of human and humanoid robots in the real world. That's all. Thank you for Thank listening. You. We have a few minutes for Q&A. Please come up to the mic if you have questions. Hi, my name is Pamela Wisniewski. I'm University of Central Florida. I'm just going to have to tiptoe. Um, so we've done some work with virtual body ownership and presence. Thank you. I'm technically challenged, ironically. Um, and um, this work is very interesting. 
one of the questions that I have for you is, do you see there are any situations where a pre-recorded or an asynchronous um, virtual body experience would be appropriate for users as opposed to one that has more synchrony? Can you say that again? So your main hypothesis is that it increases um, emotional response and virtual body ownership if the virtual reality is synchronous with the person using it versus not synchronous or pre-recorded, right? Are there any situations that you find that there would be an appropriate or good reason to continue to have the, the asynchronous type of interaction? Um, so maybe I can help reframe the question. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, do you think that um, 